morning, everyone. Um, my name is Geoffrey uh, Katerega uh, from OpenStreetMap Africa, uh, Map Uganda, also working with uh, the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, um, currently working on a project uh, in Uganda. Uh, we are doing mapping for the refugee uh, response. Uh, Uganda is receiving a lot of refugees, uh, almost two million from uh, the surrounding countries. So we are doing mapping there to uh, help the organizations that are uh, uh, responding to refugees and uh, using OpenStreetMap and giving them data that is useful to them. So um, I'm here to uh, tell you the story of uh, set of the map Africa, um, which happened uh, last year, uh, sorry, this year in July. And um, I'll start with uh, a celebration that we made. Uh, in June this year, we had, uh, we celebrated uh, the awesome birthday. So we joined other OSM communities all over the world to uh, celebrate OpenStreetMap. But why was it uh, necessary to celebrate? Was there anything for us to celebrate? Yeah? So it has always been said that uh, data is the oil of the 21st century. And uh, there is a huge opportunity for Africa because some of the data that uh, is uh, freely available here is not there at all uh, where we come from. I um, had a friend who picked me uh, from the airport to border, and she was just using you know, uh, a map in the car to navigate until we reached the hotel. And for me, those are things that are not uh, easily available because maps are not everywhere. Uh, there's data that is missing. So there's a huge opportunity for OpenStreetMap because it will be the only solution available in some places. So where you see like a very blank uh, map on Google Maps, for example, when you go to OpenStreetMap, you find uh, well-detailed uh, data. Um, so OpenStreetMap in Africa has been growing. Um, and I just want to uh, go through some of the ways how um, it has grown. Uh, the biggest I can say is through uh, humanitarian mapping. So uh, the map that you see is uh, uh, some of the projects for uh, hot and uh, missing maps. And you can see that uh, the largest footprint is in Africa. So uh, Africa has benefited a lot from uh, humanitarian mapping, where you see a lot of uh, mapping in uh, West Africa that is uh, due to the Ebola uh, response. So there was a lot of mapping that was done there and then there are several numerous projects also happening in different parts of Africa. Um, so through these kinds of uh, uh, projects, also we get to grow our local OSM communities. So open map communities in Africa uh, organize mapathons, uh, mapping parties, um, and trainings. Uh, this is the same way it's uh, uh, done in different parts of, uh, of the world. So, we also organize uh, mapping parties and uh, get to map, but also enjoy. Um, so the other way that uh, OpenStreetMap map is growing in Africa is through uh, universities. Um, there is now what we call youth mappers, um, which is, uh, you know, uh, university student uh, uh, mapping chapters. So. There are several of them in Africa. It just started uh, this year, but it's growing very, very fast. And I'm sure there are several youth mappers even in uh, at set of the map US. So it's growing very fast. Um, there's uh, programs that offer internship programs to students and which involve the use of OpenStreetMap. Uh, one example is uh, the Roman Huria project in Tanzania, uh, which engages around 200 students during their internship. but uh, using OpenStreetMap. So they're mapping the whole city uh, on OpenStreetMap. So the students get benefit because part of their uh, studies, but also uh, the map grows in that way. Um, the other way is also through government. So you find in many cases, uh, 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 government doesn't have uh, enough data, and then someone comes and proposes using OpenStreetMap to cover the gap. So in that case, uh, OpenStreetMap grows as well. But also, the uh, other opportunity is um, you find official government data, which is uh, they're free to give out. 
So the local OSM communities get this data from government and then import it uh, in OpenStreetMap. Uh, the very good example are uh, like, for example, official uh, boundaries. So you cannot just go and map this kind of data because it will be questionable. The only best way is to get it from uh, government. But also in some cases you find um, uh, instances where even in government uh, data is missing. For example, you find a road which doesn't have an official name and have to base on uh, the community themselves and ask them uh, the name of the road and then you add it to the map. So we are also working with governments uh, and using open source tools to uh, promote uh, open uh, data. So because of this uh, huge potential, um, we realize that uh, the different OSM communities in Africa, there are over uh, about 54 countries in Africa, but uh, the success levels and the challenges each community faces are different. So you find some countries where the OSM community is you know, uh, doing very well, but in other countries you find it's at zero. So we thought it would be very important for us to come together, work together, join hands, share resources, you know, and grow OpenStreetMap as um, a group. So we are getting together. Um, so far we are about uh, 30 countries where we have uh, grown our network, but we'd like really to spread out um, and reach out all over Africa. So uh, the places which you see in the orange color are the uh, countries already on board that are work we are working together to um, come and, and grow this uh, network. And we have done some few things. Uh, one of them is organizing State of the Map Africa 2017. And I'll be uh, shortly telling you how we, uh, we did that. Um, I was lucky to uh, be in New York in 2015. Um, I attended my first uh, State, of, uh, State of the Map conference, my first Open Map conference. Um, for me, that was uh, like a very big eye opener um, I got to meet uh, a lot of people. One of the things that makes uh, the OpenStreetMap community very interesting is the sense of community. So when you come here and meet all of these wonderful people who are uh, doing the same thing that you do um, thousands of miles away, for me that is uh, very, very encouraging. So I set of the map US, I got to learn more about the potential of OpenStreetMap. And as I was sitting in these sessions listening people talk, my mind was always ringing back home and say, um, we can also do this, we can also do that. And one of the things was, we should also have a set of the map Africa and you know, sit together and uh, share our stories and learn from each other. Um, so when I went back, uh, it was key to look out for people who have uh, had the same kind of you know, uh, thought that we need the state of the map Africa and they were there. So it was just a matter of getting uh, in touch and you know, um, go through the stages of uh, how to organize a uh, uh, set of the map Africa. So I'm going to say that two years later, after going to set of the map US, uh, and from 8th to 10th July 2017, I had set of the map Africa and it was uh, hosted in Kampala, Uganda. Um, I'm glad to say it was uh, uh, a successful conference because we had representation from uh, several countries in Africa. And I'm glad to see some faces that were at set of the map Africa. So I'd ask you to wave at me if you were set of the map Africa. Thank you. Um, Palolo here is putting on the t-shirt we had at set of the map uh, Africa. It, had, uh, it has like an African design, so uh, look out for him. Um, so why was it important for us to have set of the map Africa? Uh, one wanted to, you know, uh, create this continental collaboration uh, on OpenStreetMap. There are things that, you know, uh, we can do better when we uh, join together. Uh, but also wanted to establish OpenStreetMap Africa. So when we uh, started having these meetings, it was just, you know, um, about organizing set of the map Africa, but realized that we can do much more uh, than just organizing the conference. Uh, we can uh, do projects. Uh, it was also uh, to show uh, the possibilities of OpenStreetMap to organizations, uh, to government and businesses. Like I said, um, data 
is uh, the oil of the first 21st century. And when you show the possibilities to people of what it can do, then uh, the opportunities that are, that are created in that uh, case. So um, how did we uh, manage to organize uh, set of the map Africa? We uh, formed working groups. So we had uh, uh, the venue selection committee whose work was, of course, to first of all identify uh, where the conference would take place. And um, um, they gave it to Kampala after uh, going through uh, several applications. We had the fundraising committee because there was no way the conference could happen without uh, resources, without money. Um, we had the programs committee uh, whose work was to put together an interesting program um, that would also make people, you know, come for the conference, pay and uh, be there. Uh, had the communications committee whose work was, um, you know, to, uh, to reach out to people and also market the uh, event. Um, had the scholarships committee, uh, which was tasked to bring in people. Uh, and they had a very hard job because when we gave them this task, we had budget zero, but they had to find money and uh, bring in people. Uh, then we had the local organizing committee, uh, of course, which was the uh, hosting country, which was Uganda. Uh, so we were tasked to uh, look for venue, make sure everything in, is in order. So we had uh, weekly meetings. Um, we're using Mambo uh, because uh, we're more than like t uh, 20 people, so you're not going to use like a platform which is uh, also have to think about internet uh, because some people have like very uh, uh, poor connection. So if you use, for example, uh, Skype or Google Hangouts, not going to work very well. Um, but also, we did a lot of consultations. Uh, we talked to the OpenStreetMap Foundation, uh, who gave us like very, very good advice. We talked to uh, OpenStreetMap US. Um, yeah, we are blessed to have Alisa was uh, visiting Uganda, and uh, she, gave, uh, she gave us very uh, useful information. We talked a lot to HOT. So these organizations have organized events before, and um, they have gave us very uh, valuable advice on how to go about this. Uh, yes, we had the will to do it, but we didn't exactly how. So we had to uh, gather as much information as possible to be able to do this. Um, so we are blessed to be uh, to get like very uh, good sponsorship, which uh, enabled 48 people to come in to Kampala on uh, on scholarships. So that's a list of people who uh, uh, sponsored us for the event. So this made it a, a truly African conference because if we had a representation from just like four countries in Africa, then we would not be able to call it uh, open uh, set of the map Africa. Um, we had uh, 149 participants, 83% uh, from Africa and uh, about 16% from uh, the rest of the world. Um, yeah, 71 percent were male and uh, about 28 uh, percent female. So at the next state of the map, Africa, we want to see more uh, female participation. Um, I just want to quickly go through some of the key highlights. Um, of course, uh, like I mentioned, one of them was uh, uh, youth mappers. They had a huge presence at state of the map, Africa, because of uh, uh, the university chapters that are being planted uh, in different universities uh, in Africa. So they're growing uh, open street map through the youth. Um, and uh, they had uh, uh, a huge presence that set of the map Africa. Uh, the second one is uh, crowd to map. Uh, so crowd to map is a project in Tanzania and uh, they're using mapping uh, to help young girls uh, escape uh, female genital uh, cutting uh, this is a huge problem in uh, some societies in Africa. So um, some uh, young girls are rescued from being cut. Uh, and you see the importance of maps here because the people going to rescue them sometimes don't know where they are. But then because of the mapping that has been done, someone is able to use a map and find the house of this girl. So 
Kwaotu map they have built uh, like a school uh, where these girls they are rescued and you know uh, kept in a safe place and um, you can always check out and help them uh, map. They always have tasks uh, on the tasking manager and they need mapping. Um, the other good example of uh, what is happening in uh, OpenStreetMap in Africa this year is Raman Huria. So this is Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. Um, and it's a project uh, that's funded by the World Bank, but they're using OpenStreetMap uh, to uh, solve the problem of flooding in the city. So this is very huge uh, uh, opportunity for OpenStreetMap in Africa because you have uh, international organizations like World Bank, like USID, interested in data. And you know, when you propose to them a project using OpenStreetMap, then they're interested in funding it. Um, this is in Accra, uh, Ghana. So the local OpenStreetMap community there is um, mapping bus routes on OpenStreetMap. So information that was not uh, easily available now is getting more available because of OpenStreetMap. Um, other big news that happen, is happening uh, is also the mapping for malaria elimination. Um, so this was uh, a partnership between uh, the Digital Globe, uh, the Clinton Health Access Initiative, and the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. And uh, over 500 square kilometers have been mapped um, in Africa and also um, Central America and, and Asia. So this is also improving uh, open map coverage in Africa. So the data that is uh, collected uh, in the mapping helps people who go to spray uh, for malaria know where to find the settlements and make the uh, work easy. Because you know malaria is a huge problem in Africa. Uh, in Uganda, um, we are doing a project, uh, like I mentioned, uh, crowdsourcing and camp refugee data. Um, so we are spotting uh, people who are like uh, organizations like UNHCR who are responding to the refugee uh, in, uh, refugees from South Sudan, from Congo, uh, and uh, we are giving them, we are making maps for them, we are making data available uh, for them to use. Uh, the other good example, um, I want to point out from set of the map Africa was uh, the HDX. So now uh, data from OpenStreetMap is easy for people to access because of, the, of, of this platform. Um, so exports are made from OpenStreetMap to HDX so someone can easily you know, get data, uh, OpenStreetMap data in, uh, in a very uh, easy way uh, using the HDX platform. Um, in Lesotho, that's in Southern Africa, uh, there's a very good use case of how government is using OpenStreetMap. So they're using uh, uh, OpenStreetMap for land management and uh, effective uh, physical planning. Uh, the lady you see in, in blue is uh, is a minister in Lesotho, and she's you know trying out OpenStreetMap, and uh, the whole country has been mapped uh, on on OpenStreetMap. It's like very uh, very detailed. Um, Still another story from uh, set of the map Africa is open map girls. So uh, this is to encourage uh, women into uh, mapping. Uh, so they are getting together under the name open map girls. Uh, it's about women empowerment, uh, women in technology, let girls map. So if you have, uh, if you know any projects that support uh, women in power, uh, empowerment, you can link them to, uh, to them. Uh, also, uh, we are doing a lot of mapirally in Africa. So where you see, uh, uh, you know, this is about crowdsourced street uh, level photos for everyone, street view mapping, uh, places where, you know, the Google Street car cannot reach. Then just have to get your camera and, 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 and you know, shoot these pictures and then upload them to mapirally. Um, like for me in my village where I, I grew up from, there's no, uh, uh, the street view imagery is, is not there, but when you go to Mapere, then you can find it uh, there. Uh, we had soccer, I set off the map Africa. You know, uh, a set of the map has to be, uh, you have to have some fun at the conference. So 
we had soccer, and the result was not very good for the hosts. Uh, thanks to people like Maggie here, who uh, punished us very badly, but uh, it was fun. Um, some few other events happening this year. Uh, one of them is a set of the map Cameroon, which is happening on the 1st to the 3rd of December, and then uh, a set of the map Tanzania, uh, that's 8th to uh, 10th. And uh, the good news is that Phosphor G Global is also coming to Africa next year. It will be happening in Dar es Salaam. Um, yeah, so you can make plans for visiting us. Uh, what's next? OSM Africa. Uh, we are getting more organized into working groups. Uh, we want to get more involved in the OSM Foundation. So if you are here and uh, uh, you're not yet uh, a member of the OSM Foundation, I would encourage you to do so, because we're also doing so. We want to uh, be part of the agenda, uh, decide the future of OpenStreetMap, and the best way is to uh, become part of the OSM Foundation. We want to start early, uh, preparation for the next state of the map, Africa, because we realized if you don't start early, then things cannot go well. So uh, other thing is to collaborate on projects. Um, so join us uh, to map each and every corner of Africa. Thank you. Are that working? We have time for maybe two questions, if anybody has any. Hey, thank you. Uh, I know that youth mappers and everybody that contributes to HOT or anything like that always has good intentions, but what procedures, if there are any, might you guys take to ensure that the data being added is, you know, quality? Um, yeah, thank you. Of course, um, we have to uh, fight to get quantity of data, but also quali uh, quality is very important. Um, what I know youth mappers, uh, they have a program called uh, find your uh, mapping superpowers. So they're encouraging students from just becoming uh, contributors also to go a step ahead and you know uh, uh, do data validation. Also, it's one of the discussions we had at Set of the Map Africa. Uh, each community should you know have a team that you know looks at data quality for the country, like validations. So something that we, we are working on. Any other questions? So when you go to uh, streets that don't have a name and you ask the people for the name, um, because the government data doesn't have that, is the government using the name that people give to those roads to establish as that? Or is the government taking OSM as their own data as well? Um, yeah, thank you. So the thing is, uh, in Africa where you don't have, uh, places where you don't have like, you know, official addresses, still you find the local people already have uh, a name. So there is no official map. Uh, you're trying to create a map. Uh, the first thing you do is go to government and say, is there an official name for this place? So if there isn't, then you have to ask the local people. And what they give you is what uh, even government will consider as uh, uh, the actual name of the street. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.